I have a little bit more time to look at two payees, um, so we'll we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and authorize disbursement with the exception of uh, checks. And, and uh, what do you want to give a timeline? Say a couple days for for which check numbers are we talking about? Well, he he has he wants to go through Inland Design Goss of Greenwood's checks, so I think it's easier to go. And I'll make a motion that we approve all the other disbursements other than Inland Design and Gosford Greenwood. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, but let's try and give it a, a, you know, a couple days so that she can at least get them paid on time if, if, if you don't I, find I'll, anything. I'll look at it. Yeah. I can look at yeah. it tonight. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, um, okay. Uh, let's go on to the Township Manager's Report. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, the Downingtown Area School District School Board is meeting tonight and probably done but um, tonight they'll sign agreements with uh, Pulte Homes uh, for the um, um, yeah the PennDOT and highway occupancy permits um, for the additional land or uh, I should say uh, construction easements f on uh, Bollinger Road and also along Horseshoe Pike um, I spoke to Bill Krieger from Pulte Homes uh, earlier this week. Uh, he's scheduling a pre-construction meeting for the third week in July. Uh, estimated time frame for this site work and installation of the traffic signal, according to Mr. Krieger, uh, is 60 to 90 days once they start construction. He's hoping uh, that they'll be able to move that schedule up if, the, um, if all the documents are uh, recorded. Uh, last night at the 2018 Volunteer Recognition Celebration in Nottingham Park, the Chester County Historic, uh, I'm sorry, the Chester County Historic Preservation Network uh, presented the Township um, and Historical Commission with their award of honor for historic preservation, uh, along with citations from <coughs> County Commissioners, uh, Representative Becky Corbin and Senator Rafferty. Uh, the award was in recognition of the um, restoration efforts by our Bonsville Mill committee members uh, to turn the property, which many of you know was run down uh, in disrepair, uh, and, and turned it into uh, a unique uh, passive recreation facility as well as uh, preserving a significant piece of the industrial history. Uh, we're hopeful that these restoration efforts will continue uh, to be successful in the pursuit of uh, recognition of the Beaver Creek Historic District. Uh, there's still uh, plenty of work uh, to be done on the site. The township's owned it since um, 2004, uh, and uh, 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 the Bonsville Mill Committee members are to be commended for um, turning this into uh, what will be very wonderful uh, actually it is a wonderful place now there's walking trails uh, the buildings have been secured there's still work to do so we're looking forward to that but uh, as I said last night to the uh, Chester County Preservation Network when we first bought the property um, I thought what are we going to do with this it was uh, just I just couldn't fathom that but over the years with a uh, master plan and the hard work of the committee members uh, it's really turned into a special place um, last or Monday night June 18th uh, we had a very successful town hall meeting uh, it was well received by the participants based on the feedback I've received thus far uh, several takeaways uh, from the comments that were provided uh, by the groups that consultants Richard Pomerantz and Ray Halverson uh, formed at the start of the meeting. I, I think there's some information that we can get out to people to better understand um, the issues we deal with as far as traffic, stormwater management, um, and several of the other issues, uh, whether it's by a website, future editions of the mile marker, and possibly um, future public meetings. Uh, the report will be provided to the Board of Supervisors later this year for their uh, review and comment before it's made public. And the last item I have, the state legislature made changes to the Pennsylvania fireworks law in October of last year 
primarily to generate what they say is approximately $12 million in additional revenues. Uh, what the law change did uh, was expanded the types of consumer fireworks that are permitted to be purchased uh, in Pennsylvania by Pennsylvania residents. Uh, residents have always been permitted to purchase items um, uh, such as sparklers and similar ground uh, products. Uh, they call those Class C fireworks or consumer grade fireworks. Uh, they expanded that to include firecrackers, Roman candles, bottle rockets, or similar products which contain less than 50 milligrams of explosive material. It's, that's a little more than uh, what you'd find in a cap from a cap gun. Um, what the, uh, what people don't realize is it still does not permit uh, display fireworks uh, such as salutes and other aerial um, fireworks that contain at least 50, 130 milligrams of explosive materials and professional shells that contain uh, 60 grams of pyrotechnic material uh, and are only to be used by a uh, licensed pyrotechnician and they also require a permit from the township along with an insurance certificate. Um, there are plenty <coughs> of venues over the July 4th holiday such as Good Neighbor Day uh, where families can enjoy a professional fireworks display. We want everyone to have a safe and enjoyable July 4th holiday. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, Assistant Township Manager's Report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, sticking with my summer tradition, I'm going to outline the events that are being hosted between now and the next regular session of the Board of Supervisors, which will be on July 19th. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Committee will host the first of three summer concerts in the community park on January 23rd. This event features Panama Rex, a, gen, uh, a Jimmy Buffett-inspired jam band with rhythmic grooves that crosses genre boundaries. On June 25th, the For the Park Golf Outing, uh, which is a fundraiser for uh, improvements in the community park, will be hosted. There's still time to sponsor a whole or uh, join in the fun as a golfer yourself. And on July 13th, the second of the three uh, kid-friendly movies in the park, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be hosting Toy Story, which um, I, I feel really old saying this, was 1995. Um, but it, it, we, could we could show our children what animation used to look like. Um, uh, come out and enjoy Toy Story. I, I'm also pleased to announce that at the first of the uh, the, the Kid Friendly movies, which was last Friday, we had between 250, uh, 250 and 300 people come out to uh, join their neighbors and uh, popcorn and uh, have fun under the stars. Uh, my thanks as always to the outstanding volunteers of the Parks and Recreation Committee who make all of these events possible. Uh, second this evening, uh, surprise, the township has a new YouTube channel. I was, um, uh, I did this as a, as a, as a stopgap measure. Um, um, our uh, ebrandywine.org address um, on our content management service has a limit on the number of videos that I can post. And I ran out of space given that I just posted seven hours and 27 minutes of video from the conditional use hearings that, that the board just wrapped up. And also uh, Monday's meeting went uh, about two hours, although I did actively crop that down about uh, an hour and 10 minutes because there was a great deal of discussion that, that folks at home don't need to witness, which was the, the, the small group um, discussions. Um, uh, YouTube has a number of advantages, I'm discovering, since I've done this. Uh, one is there is unlimited capacity. Uh, second, I'm able to embed the comment on uh, the content, the individual videos on elsewhere on our page directly. And I think most importantly, uh, the technology is advanced to the point where um, closed captioning can be automatically added to um, the videos that we produce. And I think that that opens um, all of uh, this uh, democratic action up to a wider audience. Um, I think that's a, a wonderful thing that we've gotten to that point. Yeah, it's great. We already have a million thumbs down. <laughs> Um, uh, actually, I can tell you that there's been, just as of this afternoon, there was 95 views of Monday's meeting, which I think is outstanding. I, I, I have no reviews to report, but I, I do know that 95 individuals have viewed it, which I think is a wonderful thing. 
Uh, staff intends to follow the same records retention schedule established by this board with your resolution 14 of 2017 with the content on this site as well. Thank you. I have one more thing, oh, unfortunately. We got a second pager? I do, I do. It's a quick one, but it's sad. I am um, uh, sorry to announce that Dan Rhodes has resigned from the Historical Commission. Uh, Mr. Rhodes joined the commission in 2012 and was instrumental in conducting original property research on many properties in the township. I'd like to extend my sincere thanks for his years of service. No second. Thank you very much. Um, Building inspector's report. For the month of May, there were a total of 48 building permits issued, three zoning permits issued. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there were 25 use and occupancy permits issued, a total of 204 inspections completed, uh, total fees collected by the building department, $74,371. Respectfully submitted to Rand King. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roadmaster's report. On Tuesday, we received our automated red light enforcement, which is um, oral agreement from PennDOT for improvements throughout the township. This includes improvements to the signal located at Brandywine Drive and Horseshoe Pike, updating street, regulatory, and advisory signs, and new pavement markings. I request the supervisor's approval to forward the agreement to our solicitor for review. Um, on July 26, Ms. Beth Yor of Cedarville Engineering and I are planning to meet with the Hideaway Development Homeowners Association. This meeting is to discuss the preliminary plan for stream bank restoration along the Culbertson Run stream that flows along Little Washington Road. The stream is located within the development and is owned by the HOA. This proposed stream restoration is part of our pollution reduction plan. We hope, we hope to uh, see if the HOA is interested in partnering with the township to improve this section of the stream. The proposed restoration, along with the Hawthorne Drive stormwater basins, which I'll discuss later, will meet our obligation for the first five years of our PRP permit to reduce sediment in our impaired streams. And, um, on May 3rd, Chairman Kyle Scribner, Brian Kolakowski of Cedarville and I met with the residents of Colbert's and Run Development. Purpose of the meeting was to give the residents an update on progress with the plan, answer questions and get feedback. It appeared that uh, during the meeting, the plan was well received with the exception of one resident concerned with tree removal and possible damage to the shade garden located within their backyard. Since that meeting, I've asked Cedarville to put uh, the design work on hold, pending approval from the board to proceed. Due to the proposed stormwater improvements being part of the pollution reduction plan, the final submission of that report has also been put on hold. I respectfully request permission to have Cedarville proceed with the Corbettson Run stormwater improvement plan and also the PRP plan. And then on uh, Friday, June 15th, a pre-bid me meeting was held here at the Township Meeting Room for our 28 road, 2018 road program. This project includes base repair and overlay of Dilworth Road from Little Washington to Hopewell Road, which is the entire length, and Hopewell Road from Rock Raymond to Creek Road. Also included is the access drive to the Delaware County Community College Wastewater Treatment Plant um, the original bid approval date has been changed from July 5th to the 19th due to the cancellation of the July work session. And this project will be paid from both the Public Works Capital Improvement Fund and the Liquid Fuels Fund. The improvements at the community college treatment plant, those costs will be reimbursed by the municipal authority. Okay, so let's go. You're looking for um, supervisor's approval for the PennDOT oral agreement. I personally don't have any problem with that going to Kristen Camp for uh, for her review. Nor do I. I don't, I don't think it needs a motion. No, I don't either. Um, and then we're talking about the Culbertson Run meeting. I personally was there for that. Again, I don't. I couldn't take a guess, but I would say 
30 people were here for that. Mm -hmm. And I think Matt's correct. There was one or two people. Um, you would think if it was more um, uh, against the project, you would have had more than that. So, and, and obviously we're, we're, you know, it, it, it needs work. So, um, so I, I don't have a problem with Cedarville proceeding with that uh, improvement plan. Um, again, I was at that meeting, but if you guys have questions, happy to. I don't. I'm I'm comfortable uh, with them proceeding. I just anybody respond to Pat Mr. Trofa's email from like a week ago about uh, getting his getting the homeowner association together to try to finalize uh, what's going to go back in or what agreements. I'm not sure I saw that one to be honest with you. He I think he forwarded it. So I I think I'm gonna. I don't have enough information. I'd like to stay and maybe circle back with him real quick. All right. Well, I, I was there in, in you sec. you know, I'm okay with it. Uh, I don't know. Did you say you were okay? Yes. With it? Okay. So let, I mean, just for the, again, this is just for the, the, the plan itself. Nothing's officially going to take place. Um, so I'll go ahead and second all in favor. Aye. Aye. And then you're going to abstain. So, um, and I don't know, did you need another vote, Matt on, I think that was it, right? Right. Yeah, that, okay. would, that would be all. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to go move on to Chief for the Police Department report. Good evening. Uh, police report for May 2018. The Police Department handled uh, 1,680 uh, incidents. We had 192 investigations, four criminal arrests, two summary arrests. Uh, there were no juvenile petitions filed. Uh, this is the lowest I think I've ever seen. We only had three traffic accidents. Uh, 128 traffic citations were issued. 42 traffic warnings were issued. Uh, we completed 49 uh, house checks for vacations. And that's residents that were away. And we logged 8,240 miles of patrol. Training this past month, uh, the, the entire department uh, has been in the process of completing their less lethal recertifications, and that includes the expandable baton, pepper spray, taser, and handcuffing. Uh, we have two correspondents this month. One is from Dr. Live from the Brainy One Wallace Elementary School. She wanted to thank us for the support throughout the year, and we were on hand uh, the last week uh, giving out Frisbees to the uh, students on the last day of school. So they, that was very well received. And I have uh, another correspondence from Carl, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to pronounce this wrong, Joseph Son of Osborne Road. He thanked officers who found his neighbor, Walter Borland, uh, disoriented, walking around. They picked him up and took him home. Uh, attachments, you have the monthly investigations completed, or also activity reports and correspondence. One thing that I did not, I failed to add to my report that I just want to update the board on. Um, Within our capital reserve, we have money set aside for body cameras. Um, we are waiting for direction from the state before we move forward with that project. But recently, I was contacted by the uh, Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. Uh, they have, they are in the process of completing a statewide grant to obtain a federal grant uh, to provide 50% funding to municipalities that are interested in moving to a body camera program. Uh, so I wanted the board to know that uh, I have not signed any grant paperwork, but I have completed the initial paperwork uh, to request that funding should Pennsylvania receive a federal grant. And that would pay 50% of all the costs involved um, with that. And I, if you may remember, the uh, vehicle cameras, the mobile vehicle recorders we have in our cars now with watch guard, the body cameras that we would consider would be a complement to that and is a seamless connection and works in conjunction with each other. So uh, we're hopeful that that grant will go through. It's probably going to be a 12-month process, um, but I just wanted to update you that because you have put money in the account for that. Where's the grant money for the bulletproof vest for the supervisors? <laughs> I do have a grant. <laughs> okay, um, fire department. Uh, good evening. For the month of May, uh, East Brandywine Fire Company responded to 75 total incidents for the month. 
29 of them fire, 21 located in our primary run district, and eight of them as calls of assistance to outside uh, townships and municipalities. 46 of the incidents were medical, medically related. Um, total fuel usage for the month from East Brandywine, 251.9 gallons, uh, and West Brandywine, 81 and a half. Uh, no fire damage or fatalities or injuries uh, in this period. And finally, for training, we had four uh, firefighter training events with an average personnel of 21 involved. Uh, we'd also like to mirror the township manager's sentiment on firework safety and the upcoming holiday. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on to old business and start with the appoint, um, appointment of our budget committee. Uh, I can speak to that. Find the right button. Um, All right. At, at, the, at the last board meeting, um, I asked if there was any further information that the members of the board needed to make a decision about um, appointing a, a budget committee uh, to start the work uh, of establishing a, a preliminary budget for November. Um, you have in your packet six applications from new residents, and, and I do believe I see one of the applicants in the audience, so you may be able to direct. Uh, I don't know. If, yeah, you're, you're still there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we had four existing applicants who were interested in serving. At, at the last meeting, the, the board directed me to get application packets for the four existing members. I do not have those for you this evening. I take responsibility for that. I asked them on Monday. Um, and, and I have not received any replies. Um, that may not have been enough time to give them to fill out those forms. So and I take responsibility for that. What were we talking about for the total? There was uh, at your last meeting, you discussed appointing seven uh, citizen members and then the usual staff members to the budget committee. So you have ten applicants before you, including six new, six new members and four existing. All right, and here's the next, I, and I think I asked this before, but correct me if I'm wrong. Have you talked to the four original that are still on to see if they still? Yes, yes I can confirm they are interested. What I wasn't able to produce for you is to get apples to apples to have application packets from those four. All right, yes, on Monday. so let's table this then, because I think that that's fair, that we give everybody a fair shake and um, the July 19th. Um, meeting uh, yeah you, you, and that gives them time to get them I mean I think a month is reasonable uh, yeah you I guys agree, agree? I mean yeah. I don't, we don't we're not on our time time restraint right well we want to get it going in August I think that's the concern yeah. so yeah your next agenda item is, is well, something we, that is time to, well, right so I'm you, sorry. you currently have let, let, uh, here's another way we can handle this we currently have four that are on right now um, so if we were talking about going to seven anyway. Maybe do you want to bring it up to seven with the applications we have, and then um, more applications though. I think that we have more than seven. I think if anything, the four existing ones. All right. Well, then let's just set it in stone. We'll do it the 19th with all the applications in front of us, and then I think that's a fair. Um, My apologies for not having what you requested this evening. No problem. I, I can't make some. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll table that one until the 19th. Is that okay, Mary? Sure. I'll put it on the agenda. And then uh, uh, appoint the Planning Commission Associate Member. Can I bear with me here? Is, is there only one? So I've only seen one application. Kevin Skifaro. Why am I seeing two here? Where are, you, where are you at? I have James Grisillo, which I, is that still the one that? Uh, he wanted the, uh, yeah, I don't know where that one went. Who do you have? I only have Kevin Scaffaro. Kevin Scaffaro? Uh, he. I think that was in the packet along with the uh, budget committee people. Well, he's got it checked off in the planning. Oh, he does. He, you're right. <coughs> he 
Yeah, I mean, as long as you're, you're it's your, it's your uh, team, so to speak. So, I mean, if you guys are shorthanded and don't meet quorum, then. Okay, and as I said, I, I, I do and have done work for Mr. Grasillo, so I'm going to step out of that vote. But um, obviously, these guys are more than help. I, I'm happy to sit through any of the uh, discussions, though. Um, So, um, are you guys able to meet? When when would you be able to meet with him, or, or was that going to be something you'd have to discuss with with everybody in the committee? Uh, it would just be one or two members of the planning commission and one or two members of the, of the board staff. Maybe somebody else would sit for a Okay. You, so you already met with him. You have, um, <laughs> everybody at home is scratching their head and wondering what we're all listening this to. This mysterious voice from the back of the room. Yeah. Um, at this point, we, we generally just have one non-voting associate member, is that correct? We've had one and two. So um, it might be a good idea to have a second one. What, ex facto? Yeah. yeah. They participate in the meetings, but they don't have a vote because they're not technically a member of the Planning Commission. But it's served as a, a very good way to train people because they come to yep. the meetings, they, they're, they're part of the process, so that when you do lose somebody, like we, you, we lost Ron, you have somebody who's ready to step right into that position rather than doing it cold. Yep. Well, again, that's up to you guys. I want to step out right now. If you okay. guys want to make a motion, feel free. Yeah. I make a motion that we appoint Jim Grisillo to the non-voting associate member position on the Planning Commission. What about Kevin Scaffaro? Uh, I'd, I'd be in I, I, you have him. I, I will tell you, I know Kevin because Kevin was on the Zoning Hearing Board in Downingtown, and I'm the solicitor of the Zoning Hearing Board. I have no problem with Kevin, but that's why I was asking if I we could, know. if I we... Think, yeah, I think they should meet him. Yeah, so I think they should. So that's why I wasn't... Right now we have one vacancy... And I'm making a motion to appoint Mr. Grisillo to that vacancy, and then I would suggest that we contact Kevin, have him come to a couple planning commission meetings like Mr. Grisillo did, meet with the planning commission members, and then if they recommend him, I think we could create a second non-associate, non-voting associate position. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. All in favor? There no second. I'm sorry, second. Hey, I'm, I'm a little confused. So, you, so you you never met Kevin, but you you met you, you've interviewed the other gentleman, Chris, uh, Mr. Grisalo. Correct. You've met him, but you've he never. Came to the planning commission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The batter is dead anyway. He wouldn't have done you anyway. <laughs> He came to the planning commission a couple times. We talked. We, uh, all the members had a chance to talk to him. Everybody felt comfortable with him and thought he would be a good asset. He's a non-voting member. Uh, to become a full member, he has to be appointed by uh, the Board of Supervisors. I do think it would be great to have a second person as a non-voting member. There, uh, just in case somebody decides to leave, all, all of a sudden we have a, still have a second, a, another person ready to go. Well, I mean, um, I that why don't we just do both of them then because the second person to volunteer you know I mean I, we've been waiting for other volunteers we haven't seen it well, let's do one by one just because I can't vote for Mr. Grisillo so we have a motion on the floor for Mr. Grisillo uh, do I have a second yes I'll second okay all in favor aye aye and I'm going to abstain from that one so now we'll go to Mr. and I apologize Caffaro Caffaro and I, and I think what we and should I do. And I would like to have a chance to talk to him and make sure he fits within the, the yeah. ramification of the, the planning commission. We try to have a great mix of different people with different, okay. I don't know anything about him yet, so. Okay. It might be a perfect guy for him, I don't know. Okay, and I don't have a problem with that, so if we table that one, if you guys are okay with that. Um, 
Pete. Um, Scott can forward you his application, then you'll have his contact information, and you can. Or Mary, you have the application. I can right. sure. Either she, one. She can follow, you can then follow up and invite him to come to. Right. Because he did express, as, as Jason said, he expressed an interest in the planning commission. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so so we're going to go on to new business. <laughs> the uh, the Zen Road culvert replacement bid result and award. Yes, if I may. On uh, June fifteenth, uh, we had the bid opening for a culvert on Zen Road. The, the culvert is located in the area of the Trego Barn, uh, actually just south of Trego Barn. It's a small stream crossing. Um, it involves two uh, elliptical pipes and two end walls. Uh, the there were six bids received. The lowest responsible bidder was Veteran Construction and Utility Services Incorporated of Coatesville, PA. The total bid price for the Zin Road culvert replacement is ninety-two thousand seven hundred ten dollars and fifty-nine cents. Um, we have a letter of recommendation from Cedarville Engineering Group, and I ask that we respectfully request that the supervisors approve this bid. Did we have a budget item for that? Is that within the uh, budget? This is included within the Township Road project. You ready for a motion? I've seen no work to be I'm sorry. Oh. I've seen no work to be Okay. Um, yeah, do I have a motion for the... I'll make a motion that we um, award the uh, Zin Road culvert replacement uh, contract to Veteran Construction and Utility Services, Inc. of Coatesville, PA, in the amount of $92,710.59. I have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, appointment representative to serve in the multi-municipal East Spring Line Fire Company Funding Committee. Uh, this is me again. Uh, this one is time sensitive. Um, we have an agreement to fund uh, East Brandywine Fire Company with Upper Euclid Township and West Brandywine Township. And that agreement states that, that each of those municipalities shall appoint a representative to a, a multi-municipal committee to uh, solicit and then review the fire company's request for funding for the fiscal year 19. Um, the deadline for each of the municipalities appointing a party is July 1st. Um, for the first two years of the agreement, um, that representative has been uh, Vice Chairman Fisher. Um, and I don't have a, uh, I, I'm, I'm the liaison for the police department. I don't know if I should be mixing the two. I, do you have a problem sticking with the? No. Um, Unless Jason wants to take it over. I will, if you, if you, I will just for experience, but you know, if you want to, I mean. No, let Jason do it, that's fine. I'm fine with it. Okay, so I make a motion that we appoint the representative to serve on a municipal East Brainwine Fire Company Funding Committee, multi-municipal East Brainwine Funding, uh, East Brainwine Fire Company Funding Committee, uh, Jason Winters. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Township Trails Committee pre um, present the Euclid Township Cost Match Proposal for Preliminary Engineering of Section E SC1 of East West Bicycle and Pedestrian Facility Plan. This is a tag team effort. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Mike Wagner, and I am your chairman of the <coughs> Trails Committee. And I'm here with Glenn and a couple other people from the committee for support. I want to do a brief presentation on our committee and why I'm here tonight. Uh, we're here for two reasons. First, to give you some in additional information on our committee, then I also ask you for some additional support. Uh, a quick background information is about four, five and a half, six years ago, East Brandywine was approached by Brandywine Conservancy, Shio Fleming, and also Chester County to put together or be part of a Brandywine Greenways. This, the first part of the Greenways was a 16 municipality trail system 
that went from Morgantown all the way down to the Delaware River. So we had Delaware and, Ch and Chester County involved in this. As that project went further, we also got the east, the west branch of the Brandywine, which would be West Brandywine through Coatesville all the way down through Modena, connecting in Lenape. So now we have a 25 municipality package put together that was then formed into a greenways. This project went on roughly for two, two and a half years. Myself and Sandy Moser were the liaisons for East Brandywine. We went to all the meetings, we went to all the public comments, we were part of the workshops, and in the end, a big package was put together that showed opportunities for each township to further their trail networks, to work with them, to get some interconnections, to use the intermodal issues. So with that, several years ago, an opportunity came from this program. And that opportunity was the possibility of a trail going from Struble Trail to Hibernia Park. Jay and Scott and Sheila had just been discussing this earlier, and this was even before we even had a trails committee. This project went forward because of a grant. So we had a VP, VPP grant from Chester County to do this conceptual trail network from Struble Trail to the Hibernia Park. I volunteered for that because I was already part of that, and then part of that came the committee. That committee was formed, and part of the committee was this project, the East to West Trail. Through the two years that we've been working with that project, we've also have worked with other projects. So a little extra background is right now we are working on a Ferndale connection between Hopewell and the community park. That is already in design and development, and through the help of open space, they're going to fund most of it, or probably, probably, I think, all of it. And that'll give us a good connection between Hopewell and our community park. That's important because our community park is the center of East to West Trail network. It's pretty much halfway between the Struble Trail and Hibernia Park. And it's a good location, or a node if you want to call it, where people can meet, gather, and do what they need to do. Part of the opportunity or what we're going to get from this is the concept, conceptual plan gave us directions where we could go, what we're, where we should put our time and energy, and they categorized it. And part of that was also funding for the programs and how to do it. So what we decided in the trail community was that a meeting that Luke had gone to a month or so ago with Euclid Township they want to start the connection. They want to start the trailhead at the intersection of 282 and Dallin Forge Road. That is a prime connection because that's where the Struble Trail kind of crosses over, but that's where we, as a township, also have access to some land that we can put a parking lot in. Chester County is really interested in having additional trailheads and additional parking locations along the trail to be able to service the trail because they don't have enough parking. Good thing for us is that the Whitaker, Dr. Whitaker deeded, gave us property, and then he then went and put in a memorial right on the corner. So now we have a park, per se, already at a corner with very little parking to it. To, to be able to get to it, we have to cross across, throw across the bridge at East Brandywine and then cross into it. PennDOT doesn't like that, the county doesn't like that. So the opportunity, and Luke, this is this EC1, this is the opportunity that we would like to go for. This is the, the bridge abutments, the bridge, the trail network, the connection across Dowling Ford Road, the new parking lot, and then the connection across 282, which would then start our connection to the McGettigan property, which already has a trail system that we asked them to build when they took their development. So we have a trail nowhere right it actually gets used by some people that walk back and forth. This would be a caveat, because then would just give us the impetus to keep moving forward with it. So I'm here tonight for several reasons. And mostly it's for support, support from the board on multiple things. Administrative wise first, we're gonna need the help from Luke to put together grant proposals, to get proposals from engineering firms as we move forward on some of the smaller projects. But then we're also are going to need some additional support economically because a lot of the funding that we kind of try to go for, we're going to need to match. So we're going to have to have a match from the township to be able to go forward with some of the proposals that we want to do. The 
proposal that's on the board now has, was, was offered to us through Euclid Township, and Luke can probably speak a little bit better, to, better than this than I can. They offered to pay for half of whatever the fee it's going to cost to design and develop this. So design and documentation of this, and I think the number was any, between eighty-five dollars and $95,000. So they offered to put up 50% of the money already because they see this as a feather in their cap. And this is basically a start to something that can be really, really good. They offered to us the same conditions, you know, pay half. So my question to the board is, is it possible that we can get Luke to look further into the township finances to see if there's money available to be able to match this? And if not, can we f consider about maybe putting it in our budget for next year? Budgeting starts in, in August. We're going to be working our budget to try to get some additional stuff in. But we think in the Trails Committee that this project is something that we should definitely, definitely go for. Lastly, legal, legal issues. We're going to need help from the township administrative part for acquiring of easements, right-of-ways, and possibly even eminent domain as we move forward with the trail. As we know, that we have, there, are, there are people in the township that don't want stuff in their backyard, and I, I agree with that. I understand that. But in the end, the trail east to west is for the communities, not only ours, but Euclid and also West Brandywine. So that's, that's probably that's the gist of the presentation. So at this point, if there's any questions you have to ask us or you'd like to know, we're really just looking for some information so we can start moving forward and to see if this is something we can then start to work toward. So, so for on my end, um, uh, the one th I guess I have a couple questions. You said the township has property near near the, the trail that we would be able to possibly put a parking lot. Yes. Um, Jed, you'd like to. The uh, so if you look at this um, conceptual plan, where the oh, real quick is it open space land or is it land that we have for something else? It is um, land that we acquired with open space funds, but it, we own it in fee, and there is a restriction that permits us to put the park, put a parking lot, and I forget what, there's a maximum size on the parking lot, but this. There's a maximum si <coughs> size, and it also has to be out of the view shed of the Whitaker farmhouse. Which, which where it's located on this conceptual plan is where no, it close. had been intended to, to be. So that's land that we own. It's basically park land. Right. And it would be able to accommodate that, that parking lot. Uh, we also own the land on the um, north side of Dallin Forge Road, which is labeled as the Helen and Robert Whitaker Memorial Trailhead Park. We own that land that the Whitakers paid for designed and constructed the park amenities that are in there right now, including this trail, uh, this part of this trail that's shown on here. Okay, so that was my first uh, question. Um, the, the second question was uh, the 90,000 or, or thereabouts, that was for the conceptual plan? No, that was for design and documentation so they can then go to build. Okay. So the idea was that we would get it all figured out by the end of the year because the grant uh, possibilities start in May. They wanted to have all the grant stuff ready. If we get this all finished, then that gives us an upper edge in getting the grant money that we need because we'll have Euclid Township, we'll have East Brandywine, we'll have Chester County on board, which gives us a really good possibility of getting what we need then to build it. So the, the monies right now are just for design and documentation yep. so we can go to the next level. So, and then lastly for me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big stickler. My, my one caveat for me is eminent domain. So um, if there was any way, um, you know, that we could do any of, any of what we needed to do, or if we could do a magnitude of what we needed to do with the exception, that, that I'll be quite honest with you. Love the trails, love the parks, love every idea of the concept, just the, the taking of people's property, um, I, I'm, I'm you know, just never a fan of. However, but I will tell you, I voted for an eminent domain when the party was in favor of it because it helped them with their taxes. Yep. So there's my caveat, but if there was a way to work around that right now in the meantime, 
for me personally, but I'm only one of three, so that's good. Right now, we don't have an issue with eminent domain here. I only brought that up because in past, com past conversations and other projects that we have worked on, we've run into the issue of people not wanting sure. to be part of it. Yep. And that is the last resort that we would ever look at to it. I feel the same way about eminent domain. It should only be used for public use. And with that said, we can leave it at that, and, but it's only a very small piece. And that, we don't know, is actually going to come to fruition unless somebody actually says, no, you can't take it. The majority of the east to west trail is in either in, in right away or easements that we already own or on roads we already own. There are small pieces that we're going to have to work through, but they're very small. Can we put, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I jump in on, on, on this point? Um, the, the, the plan that you see on your screen now is one of the pages of the feasibility study, the Vision Partnership Program funded feasibility study. Um, we uh, d uh, had a, a consultant basically come up with an idea, where is the trail? Um, and that was a multi-municipal application. So in addition to, to leveraging the grant funding, we were also leveraging the other municipalities. Um, as we're looking at one section of that trail, um, th there's kind of a valley in the grant funding. It, it's relatively easy to get funding for the purposes of feasibility studies, and it's relatively easy with a strong application like this to get funding to construct. The, the valley, where there is not grant funding available, is in preliminary engineering. And so the proposal in your packet is for preliminary engineering. And uh, it is Euclid Township's preference that, that we not go through the hoops to, to try to match our, our, our local funds for the preliminary engineering. And they're offering to pay half of it. And so that's their proposal. Um, we're all confident that once the engineering is done, there will be ways to leverage um, tax dollars in, in the township. Um, uh, for construction purposes. Yeah. Now, where are we? Where are we coming up? Is it is it through Pannoni that we're coming up with the Cedarville <coughs> that we're coming up with the rough number of ninety? No. Okay. So so like I like I mentioned, um, let me get the camera McMahon on. And Associates would want to put together that. McMahon right. And they're the so ones that have also have also done the East to West Trail conceptual plan. So they've been part of what has been going on, and they're also part of the Greenways program too. So they have a lot of data already collected for it. Right. So, so we use them, but yep. it's just it's a starting point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had I had mentioned that the um, the Vision Partnership Program was multi-municipal. When we were awarded grant funds, there was a steering advisory committee made up of representatives of each of the uh, three municipalities, and and they did an RFP for design services. And the winner of that RFP was McMahon. So there's kind of a logical extension here. Um, the, the, there's, you, you know, I'm open-minded as to, to who performs the service, but there is a logical extension for using McMahon. They, they did the, the Vision Partnership Program Study Grant. So. Do you have any questions? I would just think that you'd have some engineering students, you know, in there going for their masters or doctorate that they could probably would love to do something like this I mean well, the only problem with that is most who are going for graduate school are not licensed PEs and you have to be a licensed PA to be, to be able to design and then seal it now if you have an engineering firm that has engineers in training they'll probably give that to th that project to them or pieces of that project to them but in the end you have to have a licensed engineer oversee the, the design and then the documentation of it I mean the actual class would be the project, so they would have the. the oh, same. oh, using it as a, as a classroom project. <laughs> uh, yes, you could, uh, but unfortunately, that classroom project you couldn't take it then into the design firm. You'd have to have some type of um, agreement between the class and and the engineering firm. I've done this when I've taught, and usually they're just conceptual plans. You, you take your class out there, they do the project, they they. Um, they announce it to whatever stakeholder was there, and then it pretty much gets shelved. And it's only because students don't have the, all the knowledge that they need to be able to do it efficiently. But it's not a bad idea. I've done that before in some other projects, too. Thank you. Um, I know that um, when we used um, 
McMahon previously, uh, they um, that project took I think around nine months or so, maybe a year. Um, do they feel if they uh, if they got approval to start this now that they'd be able to have it completed in time to do to get into the next grant cycle next spring? I think the idea, Luke, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, was to try to get it done before the first of the year so that we could then yeah. ramp up for the grant cycle, which was starting in March. Yeah, the, the most likely source of funding for construction um, is a grant that's due in May. So the deadline would be May 2019 to have this done. And what about so, so funding uh, for right now for, for the plan? Uh, well, there, obviously, this isn't an, uh, anything that's in the budget, and so I think that's the the, the, the core. Re I feel like the party we owe an answer to is our neighbors in Euclid Township. Um, they've expressed a preference for how to proceed in implementing the plan, and that is to not wait on grant funding for preliminary engineering. And they've put their money where their mouth is and said, "We'll pay half of this." So I feel like that's that's the only timeline we face right now is giving our neighbors an answer on their offer. Um, I don't recall in the proposal from McMahon how fast they turned this around. Did, did you read it more closely than I did? I did not see a time frame for okay. it. Okay. So, so the question is, is uh, should, should I look at the 2018 fiscal year budget and find $40,000 to match, assuming that that's the board's direction, or should I just plan on working with the new budget committee that we're forming to write this into the 2019 budget, or um, none of the above? Well, for, for certain, I think we, we need, we, we owe it to, to everybody to do some research in terms of the budget, whether it's new or old. But second, I think um, to find out, I mean, we, we could be spinning our tires if, if they're not going to be able to get this done for nine months to a year, then, you know, so why don't we just maybe find out from them? And I, I think that can be something via email we could answer if you responded to us and said they can do it within six months. That gets us into before the time frame well, I think oh. you said the but the uh, the grant applications would actually be in May so you're talking about not uh, 11 months that they would have to do it so I think we just need well, to we'll probably need at least a month month and a half put the grant together so we're gonna need time for right. that energies to be able to do that so I would like to have design documentation done by no later than mid January so we can then review it and go forward with what we need to do and what grant because there are several different grants out there and we can overlay them with other additional grants that are there it's just going to come down to what do we think we need and what do we think we can get with what we have available and we're trying to get a lot of pieces here so the idea is to you know, get as many pieces of the pie as we can right now as long as McMahon can get it done by that's what I'm saying can that you, would just be a phone call yeah so maybe what we can do is we can give um, um, base it off of a, a set time yeah, well what I'm saying is I'm uh, I'm willing to to uh, make a motion that we uh, approve the preliminary engineering services contract with McMahon provided that they can Correct. complete it by I'll say the end of January I can make that call or Luke can make that call it doesn't matter to me okay. you have a second I think that we should in my opinion I'd like to look at a little bit more information as far as the actual I see this as a part, but I'd like to see wor you know, wor where it's gone from Hibernia to here and what I would like to see our existing easements that we have, where you think there's going to be trouble obtaining them. And I, I believe that man was going to circle back. They had asked questions in Pancoast Lane and a yes. lot of folks, but they never went back around and, and actually because a lot of that was just conceptual. At this point, the trail's just laid out conceptually. The GIS information that McMahon used isn't accurate, isn't as accurate as on-site data with a surveyor. They took, they took information off of a GIS system to find out and where they could weave the trail in and out with the easements and the uh, right-of-ways and stuff <coughs> that we already have. The right-of-ways that we would use are the ones along Hopewell Road, which are anywhere from five to seven or eight feet off of that. So that is a state issue. So that's not really a, a, a private person's issue. That's owned by the state. Township Road, same issue. We already kind of own those. We own those right-of-ways, and we can do what we need to do there. Roads that have been dedicated to the township are pretty much our roads, and we can do what we need to do there if we, if we so choose to. It's when we go to other locations where we might have <coughs> The right-of-way might only be three feet off the center line, off the edge of the road because of the way the road is moved. 
that's where we might have to acquire some more additional right away or easement through that property to be able to keep moving forward. All this information is on our township website. This project, east to west, you can go and you can see the trail from start a to point A to point B. And also, if I'm not mistaken, too, there are some locations that are called out which will be difficult to develop because of where they are. This was all part of the conceptual plan, which then gets worked out as we go to design and development. I'd be happy to sit down with you, Jason, and go over the plan with you. I know a lot about it. <laughs> I know, like, yeah. for, for, for example, the McGettigans, mm -hmm. they, they already have that paved. Yep, that's already paved. Parcel that's already between the Gettigans and Creek Road. We have some of that. And the, and the Playhouse and everything right up against the road. Is there any area to... to no, we have, we have some location already in the field. If, you're, if you make a left to go up towards McGettigans on the left-hand side, that field is part of the, the township property. So we can build within there. Mm -hmm. When we get to it's the not, old... It's part of the Whittaker property. Whittaker property, excuse me. But we have, an, we have, a, uh, we have trail a trail easement... easement along Dallin Forge for the length of the Whitaker property to uh, basically to the point where Old North Buck, Buck, Buck Road was supposed to come down. East Buck. East, East, Buck, Buck. East Buck, which is, we call it East Buck Road, but it's actually that Jeep trail that goes off to the left up when you're going west. We go just past that, and that's where the Whitaker property ends. Then we don't have the connection between that end McGettigans. and McGettigan's, but that's what has to be worked out. Yes. I think that, in my opinion, I'd rather I'd rather stick with the budget and and put it on August agenda, and then just I'm sure I'm sure they'd be able to speed it up a little bit. You know, everyone has business. Sometimes you have to do that. I'm sure they could probably. Oh, what for the f completion of the project? Well, sure. Yeah, they would. They would put more people on it. Depends on what the timeline is. At this point, you know, being it's the summer and we're getting ready to start the next budget, I'd rather just wait and just. I, I would I'd also suggest that there might be some some creative solutions. Um, if if the goal is to to not expend East Brandywine money uh, until 2019 in the new fiscal year, and we have a, an offer to match, and McMahon is billing as they go, they could begin work in late 2018. All those bills paid by uh, by our neighbors, and then come January 29, the bills that come due at that point paid by the township. But we would be committing ourselves to uh, a 2019 budget item in so doing. That's why I think, I don't know if we could speak for them. I think I'd rather just wait. But that's me. I mean, it's. Um. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, we just had our we just had our uh, our um, consulting group in here, and and I think that was one of the big ticket items that you know, more parks, more trails. If I'm not mistaken, that's more open space. Yep. Uh, you know, or access so, to it. So, so, and trust me, with the kids and their video games, I, I, I'm all in favor of getting kids out on, on their bikes. Although I see what happened to your arm on your bike. Well, that's so. a motorcycle. So, um, <laughs> but, but as a, as a, as an additional information though, too, intermodal connections, trails, walking trails, bike paths, stuff like that. That's also part of Landscapes 2.0, which is not going to be Landscapes 3.0, which is a Chester County initiative to build trail system. It's part of their comprehensive plan. So we are just filling in our piece as part of the county to do what we need to do. So this is also, I don't say it's mandated, but it's part of the long-term comprehensive plan for the growth of Chester County. Um, again, I, I don't, I, right now it is $40,000 it wasn't budgeted for. However, I, I, I would, um, I would say I'm, I'm willing to, to second this, but I want to make perfectly clear that this is not going to come out and say, oh, now it's 95 or 105. Um, I want to stick to a budget, and if, if, if it can be done for that budget, great. If not, we, we, we uh, revisit this with the budget committee for the next, the next, um, next go-round. Would they give us 5% off if we do it now and not wait? 
So, so if I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, if I can be so bold, I'm hearing the foundation of a motion, and, and that is th that uh, we can proceed with preliminary engineering using $2019 only, and, and you're directing staff? Or, 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 I, I thought that that was, was Jason's... Uh, well, I'm okay with the 2018, uh, 40,000. Um, however, that that's where I draw my line at the 40,000. I don't want this coming back to say 63,000. It, it's it the I think the proposal is $95,860. Our match would be one half of that, so it would actually be 40, 425 40. basically. Right. How about uh, that gentleman? He had a good idea. How about you split it? How about half? Half out of eighteen and half out of nineteen. Well, I think I think I, I don't have a problem with with doing it that way. I, I, I'm more my biggest concern is 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 it getting escalating? Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. We don't want add-ons. So so um, our our, exper our experience with McMahon has been that they when, when they give us a number, yep. it's a pretty hard number. So they have not oh, exceeded on any of the other projects that they've done. It's always us. it's always possible to get secondary numbers too. And Luke and I discussed this just very briefly, but since Euclid Township is, I'm going to say, the first player in this, we have to kind of follow their lead. But since we're giving them money, I made the suggestion that maybe we look out and see if there's another engineering, engineering firm that could give us a, a competing number or something along that line, just so we can see. And I, I brought one of them up only because one of the engineering firms actually did all of the surveying and development work done its occupation before we did the property. Now, they weren't asked to do anything because I don't think Euclid knew that they actually did that. That only caveat there is they already have the existing data when it comes to the surveying, so the surveying number would go down. I think the surveying number for the proposal was 17.5. It could be less, it could be you know close to it, depending on what needs to be done. So there's always options there. The 95860 includes the optional task six, which is technical assistance for grant prep, and that's fifteen thousand dollars. So we so wouldn't need so the grant the prep 80, because the eighty thousand eight hundred and sixty is what they're actually for quoting the, you for the design. For the design. Yeah. So you could do your your approval could be for the one half of the eighty thousand eight hundred and sixty and not include optional task six. Right, right. Which was my original forty. Because we might be able to get Brady Wine Conservancy to help us pro bono on that. Yep. So, uh, and I'm okay. I think it's a great suggestion. Let's, let's. I mean, uh, if you guys are okay, authorize half for the 2018, half for the 2019. Um, and again, you're going to have uh, a match fund coming out of 2018. Sounds like from from another party, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm okay pending that. So, would you like to see that in the trails committee budget? The additional monies, then. I mean, we'll put that in our budget if that works. I. We'll yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I just want to say one other thing too. Is you. You may want to look into, you may be able to use your open space funding for this, to fund it. I know that there's specifications on how that funding can be used, but that may be one thing. I, I'm not familiar enough off the top of my head. Uh, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's first distinguish that there's two open space funds. There's the fee in lieu of recreation. One of them, right. yeah. one of them you may be able to use. Right, and then, and then the other is the, the referendum or the earned income tax pool of money. And um, in as much, I think it's important to mention that the, the board um, has a, has appointed an, avo an advisory body for the referendum fund, and, and this proposal has not been run by them. Uh, ultimately, it's the board's decision, but I, I do want to point out yep. that if we're talking the referendum fund. Kristen was just saying we could look into, into that, it. not yeah. that okay. we were right, committing absolutely. to that. Fair enough. So I'll, I'll amend the motion to be the 80000 for the uh, design work. The money for and uh, 80, half, eight, half, eight, half, of the, half of the 80860 Unless you want to throw in some more for some other design and development, we have other projects. <laughs> All right, so, so there was a motion. Jason seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so now you're, we're going to... really pushing your luck. <laughs> so now we're going to go on to the subdivision and zoning applications. There are none. Ordinance task force, there are none. Ordinance and resolutions, none as well. Public comment on agenda items. Seeing none. Uh, the uh, notices for today, the July 4th, 2018 Planning Commission meeting is canceled. The next regular scheduled meeting will be held on August 1st, 2018. And the July 5th, 2018 Board of Supervisors meeting is canceled. The next regular scheduled meeting for that will be held on July 19th, 2018. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye.